And uh, Brother Charles Furman, he's going to read from 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, a very familiar portion of scripture and a very powerful one. Amen. Go ahead, my brother, read. 1 Corinthians, chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Now charity is love. And the love that he's talking about, Paul is talking about, is agape love. It's a godly love. The Bible says, what manner of love is this that the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called? Amen. Sinners should be called children of God. What manner? It's agape love. It's a godly love. And this is what Paul is talking about on this morning. Though I have the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I become a sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. Read on. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. There's no, there's no profit in God's sight, our sight, when you're giving. Just because you're giving, that don't mean that you love. Amen. The Bible says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Now, we're living in a time, the Bible also spoke about it in the 24th chapter of St. Matthews, that in the last day, the love of many will, back, will wax cold. Now, how many would agree with me that these are the last days? These are the last days. So the word of prophecy is going to be fulfilled. It's being fulfilled. Where mother is rising against daughter and daughter against mother, father against son, and son against father. These are the times that we're living in. Amen. My subject today um, would be simply this. What does love have to do with it? Amen. What does love have to do with it? This church in Corinthians, they were a very very spiritual gifted church they had talents they 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 spoke in tongues they had healing they had all them things going on in that in, in that ministry but this church was a carnal church it was a church that was a baby it was in its infancy amen it had not matured yet it was a church that had schism in the body on this side of the church was Jay's side and on that side of the church was minister morton's side and in the balcony was wayne and the bishop electric group Amen. They were a very divided church. Some was of Paul, some was of Apollos, some was of Cephas. But Paul said, I didn't die for you, neither did Silas. Amen. Neither did Cephas. But it was Christ who died for our sins. So it was a very carnal church. It was a church that every time you turn around, by the time service was open, it was rumbling at the door. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, y'all might not have y'all might not have known a church like that, but I, I've known some ministries just like that. Yeah. Amen. Don't, don't look at your neighbor. <laughs> Yeah, by the time you, by time you, before you get outside, you're talking about one another. You dog on one another. Then you have the nerve and the audacity to say you're a Christian. I think that you're anything but a Christian. See, 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 a Christian have a dress code. And the dress code is not your, not your cotton stockings, your long dress. Amen, your two-piece suit. But it's the love that you have in your heart. That's the true sign of being a Christian. Amen. That's the true sign of covering one another in love. The Bible says how love will cover a multitude of sin. And I find out in the church, we are so quick to condemn, to judge. We act like we're God up in the house of God. Amen. But love will cover. Love will look beyond a person's faults and see the need. That's the agape love of God that we need in the body of Christ. You can speak in tongue all you want. You can prophesy until your face turn blue and the prophecies can be true. But if you don't have the love of God in your heart, it profits you nothing. 
We need to start striving to ask God to put more love in our hearts. This is why we're so divided. Then you wonder why the pews are not filled. If I was God, I wouldn't send no one to a church that doesn't have love. Because first of all, you're going to think it's all about you. You're going to offend someone. You're going to criticize other folks because you really don't have my love. You don't have the heart of God. But God loves covers. We need to learn to start putting up with one another. The L for love stands for long suffering. Isn't that what Paul says? Love is long suffering. Love is gentle and kind. It's not giving everyone rolling eyeballs and cock eyes and the fingers and the arm bows, elbows. It's not doing all of that. That's not the love of God. Now, I know when you was in the world, that's how you roll. But the Bible says, come out from the world and be ye separated, saith the Lord. It's time for a change. If you don't have love, all you have is religion. And religion will get you going into every twin tower that you see up and down the street. That's what religion will do. But love covers. Yes. Ye that are strong, ye that are spiritual. You're supposed to strengthen those that are weak. You're suppo we're supposed to be covering those that are weak. Yes. No one should never come through that door feeling guilty because they're worrying about what you or me think about them. No, 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 that's not what the church of God is for. When you come to the church of God and you see all, oh, everyone in here got it together, everyone in here say something's wrong. You don't have no room for sinners. Ah. Where is the sinner supposed to sit? Yes. If you will, why well, go to the doctor? The Bible said you got to let the wheat and the tear go to, grow together and stop judging them. Stop condemning them. You have to start loving them. The Bible also says, by love and kindness have I drawn you unto me. Yes, yes, yes. My God, love will tear down racial barriers, Amen. all types of prejudice. Yes. <laughs> That's what the love of God, the agape love of God would do. You know what? I love him only because he first loved me. And God is teaching me every day how to really, really love, man. Don't you start, um, Jay. <laughs> we have the connection. He's ready to start on me. But God has teached me how to love, man. Not just to love those that love you, but love the unlovable. Amen. Love them that don't love you. Love them that talk about you. Yes. Anybody can love somebody that gave you, you know, that's doing good to you. Yes. But how about the person that's not doing good to you? Yes. That's not treating you right. Yes. That's where true Christianity stands up at. What does love have to do with it? It had everything to do with what we're about. If you want to be known as a true disciple, you start loving folks and, start, and stop condemning them. Amen. Nobody condemn you. It, but, see, but they forgot. We forgot where the Lord brought us from. Yeah, we fall down but, and we got up. Read that. For, continue to read that, Brother Charles. Verse 4. Charity suffers long. Suffers long. Is patient. Is kind. Go on. Charity envieth not. Is not envious of no one. Charity vaunteth not. I'm not itself. jealous of you. I don't have to go around being puffed up, varnish myself, let you know how great I am. I'm, not, I'm nothing. We're nothing. But Christ is everything. That's why I'm grateful. You know what? I am so glad that I'm a sinner. Now, Pastor, I hear her, her, her theological thoughts saying, make it plain. I can hear a voice ringing in my head saying, make it plain. Because because I was a sinner, I got to experience God's love firsthand. Amen. I see ya. Yes. Yeah, yeah. If you haven't been there, if you haven't done that, you may not know what I'm talking about. I, I, I got to see, I, 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 firsthand, I seen God deliver me from drugs. Amen. Yes. No 12-step program. Yes. 
Just one step in the right direction. By experiencing his love, not his condemning me, but his love, I was able to put down my cigarettes. Something that I was trying to stop, but I couldn't stop. It had me, but because of his love, I didn't need a nicotine patch. All I needed was his love to pat me. That's all I needed was his love. His love, when I'm traveling, when I'm away from home, it, it keeps me going. Just his love for me. Because I was a scum, for as far as my eyesight, of the earth, you know, and he delivered me. I appreciate what he's done for me. That's why when we were away, and I appreciate y'all singing this song this morning. Who, who came up with that song this morning? Y'all great minds, great. I'm so grateful. I am so, so grateful because God loved me before I even loved myself Amen. and before I even loved him. Amen. What kind of love is this? In John 3, 16, it says he so loved us that he gave. See, love gives. It's not varnished. It's not puffed up. It's not envious. But it's long-suffering. It's gentle. It's kind. And as I preach right now, this word to you on this morning about the love of God, the agape love of God, and what does love have to do with it. I find within my conscience, within my reason, within myself, that God, I really don't love enough. I see myself, God, because your word is a, is a lamp unto my feet and it's a light unto my pathway. God, that I'm... I'm, 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 I'm I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet, God. Things still bother me. Yes. But his love covers me. So I, I, I'll get you there. You just keep on looking into the hills for which cometh to your help. I'll send you help. I'll give you deliverance. I'll give you strength. I'll give you what you need. Ouch. Don't know my own strength. My God. I just love him. I just love him. I just love him. I'm trying. It's tough, man. You just don't know. The love is so powerful that you never have to judge no one. Jesus said, I didn't come to judge the world, but I come to save. I come to seek and to save that which was lost. Because he loves me so much, when I would do wrong, and sometimes I do do wrong, he helps me to repent of the wrong that I've done. When I offend someone that I really didn't mean to offend, or when I offend someone that I didn't want to offend. His love brings conviction to my soul. His love would only let me go so far that it just pulls me back. 
with loving kindness have I drawn you unto me. What manner of love is this? It's powerful, church. And if the church could really learn to love, when I say the church, that includes me too. The world would be a better place. Love covers. We need to leave this place with a new mindset. And it's amazing that we're in fellowship, the revival, church of love. That's where we're at. Our love needs to be revived. Our love needs to have fellowship, not only with one another, but with those that are not the other. This is the type of love that we need in order to survive these trying times. These are trying times. These are trying times. Yes, but we need that love, that agape love. So when the devil asks you what the love have to do with it, you tell him everything. Everything. Because without that love, I'm sounding brass. And I'm tinkling cymbal. Though I understand mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have faith to remove mountains and have not the love of God, it profits me nothing. I'm long suffering, love says. Amen. The O stands for I'm out in the presence. I'm on, I'm, I'm on opponent. Amen. I'm everywhere. I have all power. Love is more stronger than death. The V stands for I'm virtuous. I'm righteous. And the E stands for I'm eternal. That's what God is. He's everything to me. Oh, yes. Can't you feel the love going in you? Yes, can't you feel the love going from breast to breast and heart to heart? Can't you feel the love making you say, I need to forgive that brother. I need to forgive that sister. You know, can't you feel it? I know I do. I know I can feel it. It makes you feel it when you put up love. You say, you know, it's not as bad as I thought it was. Yeah. Love will help you to climb every mountain. Love will help you to cross every sea. Love will help you to endure every valley. That's what love would do. The Corinthian church was a gifted church, but it was an immature church when it came to God's love. His mothers will lie with their stepsons, but they were a gifted church. They had ism and schism in the body, division, but they were a gifted church. Sometimes they were legalistic, but they were a gifted church. Paul said this church was so Sure, he said, I had to give you milk in first Corinthians, the third chapter, because I couldn't give you me. Why did he give you milk? Because they were yet carnal, they were yet babes, but the most powerful thing is because he loved them. He yet loved that Corinthians church, even in the state that it was in. Love will tell you the truth. Read on. And I'm coming to my clothes. Verse 5. Don't let it behave itself unseemly. Seek Don't it, act like an idiot. Seek it not her own. Yes, it's not, it's not easily us. provoked. Yes. Think it's no evil. Now we don't have patience with no one. Even when God takes too long, we question on why Lord so long. Amen. Go on. Rejoice not in iniquity. And we love hearing bad news. How, love us, how many of us really love hearing garbage? We don't really want to hear the gospel. You don't have to raise your hand. It's a rhetorical question. But with love, he don't wait for no one to call him on the telephone to give you bad news. Some of us love to hear bad news. We love to hear somebody fell out of the race or what brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so did. That's not love. Love don't rejoice in iniquity. 
but it rejoices in the truth. You know what? And we have to come to close because we have communion. But this is this message is so powerful, but it's so simple that a child can even walk in this. Then Jesus gave us children as an example. They're forgiving one another. They don't hold grudges. We do. You know, we complain, we murmur. That's not the love of God. We need to change. We, collectively, we really need to change. We. For rejoiceth in truth. Yes. Beareth all things. Beareth all things. Believeth all things. Believeth all things. Hopeth all things. Hopeth all things. Endureth all things. Endureth all things. Charity never faileth. It'll never fail. For whether there be prophecies, yes. they shall fail. Preaching shall cease. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Give me a Honda or a Chevrolet. It's coming to an end. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Okay, how much, how many DDs you have, it'll all be over. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is per perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. No, that's what Paul's talking to the Corinthian church. You were children. You act like kids. You fuss and fight like children. You ran to mommy and daddy about everything. My daughter, Beverly. My daughter, Beverly. When she was growing up with my sons, she would always start trouble with them. <laughs> then she would maybe hit them and run to us. It's whatever, and they would get in trouble. Yeah. She would always try to act like she was the innocent one. That wasn't you. Yeah. Who was that? It was them. <laughs> yeah. But that's what children do. You know, they, they run to mommy and daddy and start all kind of trouble. It says it was them. Amen. Paul said, when I was a child, that's how I used to act. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. It's time to put away the animosity, the envy, the strife. And you know where? You know where it starts? It don't start. It starts with one individual. That's all you have to do. You can't worry about what the other person's going to do. You be that example. You be that person's covering. You be that person's strength. If you're so strong, cover them and stop judging them. Hmm. A divided house cannot stand, beloved. Together, united, we can, we will stand, but divided, we will fall. It's time to shake things up. So we're trying to stir up your pure mind. Read. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I put them away. For now we see through a glass. Darkly, yes. But then face to face. Now I know in part. But then shall I know even as also I am known. Uh-huh. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Thank you. The greatest of anything that we could do or be in the body of Christ is to have love for the brethren. God, the scripture says, is love. And everyone that born of God loveth as God loves. And he that hateth his brethren, the Bible said that that individual is a liar and the truth of God is not in that person. God loves the murderers. That's what Moses was. Moses killed an Egyptian. I'm talking about how God loves cover. God loves the drunkard. 
Noah was drunk as a skunk. After his 40 days or whatever on the ark, 300 something something days on the ark. As soon as he got off, he built a vineyard and the man got drunk. But God loved Noah. God loved the adultery, because that's what David was. David was an adulterer, a murderer, a conniver, but God said that David was a man after his own heart. David had enough sense to repent when he did wrong and stop blaming the other man. God loves the liar. Abraham lied and said Sarah wasn't his wife. Realizing that they didn't have the same mother, but they had different fathers, but a lie is a lie. Half truth, and that's what saints oft time tell, half truth, but they'll let you believe a lie rather than the truth. But I'm here to tell you that God still loves you. Yes. God loves also the blasphemers. That's what Paul was. He blasphemed the name of Christ. He blasphemed. Talked all evil against Christ. He took men and women to prison and killed them, had them fed before lions. He had consension to the first deacon's death. The St. Paul, the same fellow that wrote this 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians. But God loves him. God loves the blasphemer. God loves the murderers. God loves the whoremongers. Yes, the prostitutes and the pimps. God said a lot of them are going to enter in before you self-righteous folks. Because they'll believe. But we won't believe. But God loves them. So if God loves them, who gives us, what gives you the audacity to not love anything that God loves? When God made man, he said man is good. He loved the homosexual. He loves the lesbian. He loved the crack addict. He loves me. Because by the grace of God, they go you and I. We are no better. You get saved and you lose your mind. You forget where you come from. I know you're supposed to forget those things that you're behind, but you better not forget what he done for you. You better not forget where he brought you from. Someone had the nerve to tell me, you know, that you're not those things no more. No, I'm not. Only because of him. Only because of him. I'm not going to fool myself and tell God to take off the training wheel because I need him. I need him every day and every hour. Yes, Lord, I love you. I don't want to take a chance of living this life without God. What about you? So God loves the blasphemer. He loves the tax collectors. He loved those. That, he loved the IRS. But most of all, today I've learned in my final closing that God loves sinners. He loved them so much that he gave them a sinner's prayer. I didn't hear no righteous man prayer, but I heard the sinner's prayer. When I seen the righteous man, he was patting his chest and saying, God, I did this. I paid my taxes. I paid my time. I fast twice in a week. He had a nerve to stand up in God's face and tell God what he does. But I see the sinner. I see my son. And I'm just beating my breast, beating my chest like I'm tossing. excited sometimes what God has done in my life and because he done it I owe a price that I cannot pay and he paid a debt that he did not owe for me I am so happy about that I am so happy he paid 
paid the debt because of his great love for me. He looked down the lines of time and said, I'm predestinated. I don't know about none of you folks, but I'm talking about me. I have been predestined from the foundation of the world to stand in this place and to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to all that will believe. Believe what? That God is love. And that God loves you. I don't care what you did Saturday night. That's why that anointing was up, wasn't up here today. When that anointing is not up here, it wasn't on the keyboard, it wasn't on the musician, it wasn't in the house. Amen. It's because of what we've been doing all week long. I'm going to tell you, in the spirit of love, whenever you don't feel that anointing, it's because of what we've been doing, what we haven't been doing all week long. But I got news for you. He loves you anyway. You ought to get happy about that. If you don't get happy about nothing else. See, that's what you should have been saying. I'm grateful. You got to get on one accord. I'm grateful. Stand up on our feet. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we won. Yes, I could go on and on and on. About because of the hours for us, we're just going to go be. To the throne of grace for you. Keep us I'm grateful, grateful for you today. So but God word does not come out Lord. for any for nothing. Amen. He said he sent this word and it shall not return unto him boy. When the word comes forth, hallelujah. I want you to know that somebody is there, is in that place. And it's nothing wrong with not having enough love to be able to forgive. Hear me out. But the wrong thing is, is when you don't acknowledge that thing and repent of that thing and get it right. That's why God sent his word. God is still dealing around us, but you don't want him to give up on you. Hallelujah. Because love do what? Suffer long. Hallelujah. And you know yourself better than anybody. Hallelujah. Even me, even Bishop. Bishop say, Lord, forgive me. I know I'm not where I should be. You need love to pastor a church. Amen. So I'm going to pray. Hallelujah. Let us look to the throne of grace. Somebody just need a special prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just as you can run right up here. Just don't take your time. If you need a special prayer, you run up here. Hallelujah. 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 H